Why can't farmers protect their own water? Why aren't Australians up in arms about all of this? If you live next to a coal mine, for example, an open cut coal mine, you're living next to one of the most unhealthy places on earth. The same with a gas field. If you live in the middle of a gas field, you are in a very unhealthy place. CSG seems an incredibly risky sort of industry. Um, risks to groundwater, the destruction of farmland. For the few dollars that a coal seam gas company offers a farmer, they would be insane to have them anywhere near their property. Basically it makes an entire area um, unlivable. You can't sell your produce, you can't sell your cattle, you can't sell your sheep, you can't sell your, your milk, because uh, it's contaminated. We do not give permission to large multinational companies to come into our region, onto our land, and put at grave risk everything that is precious to us. This is not a not in my backyard campaign, because it's in everybody's backyard. It's frustrating because you can't win. You can't, you can't fight them because you can't see them and it's done before you know it. You've got a mining application on your land before you know it's there. This is what coal seam gas mining looks like. It's dirty, it's destructive, it's highly invasive and it cannot coexist with farming. The risks are simply far too great and what we stand to lose, far too important. Our water is our greatest resource. Coal seam gas mining uses vast quantities of water and has a proven history of underground water contamination. This makes protecting our land, our water and our communities an issue for all Australians. The evidence is fossil fuels are running out. Companies have already exhausted the easy to get to resources. We're now seeing a whole range of unconventional methods of extraction emerging. Coal seam gas mining is one of the most prevalent. Fracking is a widely used method of extracting coal seam gas. Farmland is cleared to create a drill pad and a well is sunk to depths of up to one kilometre. A concoction of chemicals, sand and water are then hydraulically rammed into the coal seam to fracture and release the gas. This process is replicated hundreds of times across a region to create a viable gas field. While we know some of the dangerous chemicals used in fracking and drilling fluids, the identity of all those used remains a closely guarded secret. Chemicals that can cause cancer and reproductive damage as well as those that affect our hormones and our children's development have been found in fracking and drilling fluids and in the surrounding air and water. The average water use is 20,000 litres per well per day, according to the CSIRO. That's an average of over 7 million litres per well per year, and this is a conservative estimate. We're here today to celebrate the strength of a community called Who Wants. Mining companies and their government allies have no interest in understanding what makes places like Huong so precious. No interest in protecting our underground water tables, our clean, unpolluted air, our rich, fertile soil, or our beautiful, green, rolling hills. We want the government and our local MPs to simply listen to us, to act to protect our community and land from this mining to use their powers to enact a mining ban. They can extend the current moratorium on the process of fracking to include all activity, including exploration. There are over 350,000 hectares in Gippsland that are covered by approved coal, tight gas, shale gas and coal seam gas exploration licences. The licences take in some of the most productive farming land in the country from the fertile red soils in the west, producing potatoes, beans and peas, to the rolling green hills of the south where dairy and beef have been produced for over 100 years. 
The breathtaking beauty of Gippsland's forests, mountains and pristine coast are a growing drawcard for the region, bringing hundreds of thousands of visitors each year. We think every part of Gippsland is precious. We need clean air and fresh pure water to grow our children strong. We need good soil and healthy grass to feed the hungry throng. It's our job to save our country, to keep it safe from war. So tell those coal gas miners, no fracking on my farm. We're just concerned. We want the truth. We're sick of the non-transparency from our government allowing this sort of stuff. Why don't you just come out and talk to us? There was no community consultation. It's not fair. I own a little place up the top there. It's only small. Might be insignificant to some, but it's my house and it's my home. There's plenty of farmers around here. There's plenty of community members around here that are producing good, good, good Australian grown produce, there's milkers, and no one's listening to us. So all you Australian farmers that reckon it doesn't matter if poor bastards like us get poisoned and made sick, this is gas coming out through the ground because our coal seams are too shallow. It's poisoning me now but it's the same aquifers, it's the same coal seams. All the entire black soil in this area is going to be the same as this. So for the farmers that didn't think it was worth saving the Tara blocks or us people on the light country out past Kogan, when it comes to you, how are you going to stop it when they've already built the infrastructure over here? and it will come to you. If you've got coal seam gas on your property, it's a major impediment to the way they run their property. A lot of these people signed these access agreements uh, with the companies um, without knowing really what the possibilities were. They were told by the companies, you'll hardly even notice we were here, look you'll make all, all this money uh, and it, it'll have no impact on you whatsoever. Several years down the track, they're finding they've lost their water, they're finding the areas of their property have been polluted, they're finding that these people pay them no respect whatsoever and just interfere greatly with the running of the farm. Some of them have said to me, this is the worst decision we've ever made in our lives. We are so unhappy with what we've done. We, we, we made a bit of money, but, but what we've lost along the way has, been, has really wrecked our lives. Uh, basically, they put in all-weather roads. That means carting in massive amounts of gravel across your property so that they can get to their gas wells 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 52 weeks of the year. That never changes. That has to go wherever they go because they have to access. Farming really on a grid of even 375 metres would not be possible. We've had 18 months or more of investigation done on our water bore. We can light our water bore. The government comes out with very sophisticated equipment, with very highly trained technicians, and they say there's no gas in our water bore. The water deteriorated to the point where the stock would no longer drink it, where the frogs that had happily lived in the tank died, and that meant totally abandoning it. We need water. Farming can't exist without water. And you certainly don't need polluted water. Late last year, a door-to-door -door survey was conducted asking one question. Do you want to declare poo on coal and coal seam gas free? An overwhelming 95% of this community said yes. <laughs> This is because we want to protect our environment. Our high yield dairy and beef industry, our way of life, and most importantly, our clean, uncontaminated water. There are over 350,000 hectares in Gippsland covered by coal, tight gas, shale gas, and coal seam gas, 
exploration licenses. This covers fertile soil that produces beef, crops, wine, cheese, and over 23% of Australia's milk. Gippsland is the largest food producing region in Victoria, worth more than $1.3 billion per annum. There is no room here for the coal seam gas industry. I'm Ray, I farm in the area and uh, coal seam gas is not a good thing, simply for the sake of the agriculture. You can't eat coal seam gas uh, and the contamination of the water tables, a big issue a big issue. I mean, Gippsland's got its gold in terms of being the most wonderful agricultural resource, so amazing farming land, and it's water. And here we've got a situation where, you know, they are some of the most precious commodities in the world today. It's a good land to be growing food on and clean water. And coal seam gas will destroy that farmland and it will destroy those water supplies. Oh, look, we've got a main um, industry of dairy, beef and potatoes. Um, the industry's worth billions over years, it's always been that way. We have very rich soils and uh, the most important thing of all is our water resources. Uh, coal seam gas uh, mining companies can drill within 100 metres of any water reserve or um, dams. So look, it's just crucial, water is the link of life and if we let these people in to destroy that for a short term profit and a few fly in fly out jobs, well our community will just disperse and um, will end up barren. This is a dairy community, a beef community, and we need that. We need primary produce more and more in Australia because we are losing our farmers and losing um, our land to farm on. As a local GP, I think that the um, the initiation and progression of coal seam gas mining um, for the area will be will be bad for individuals. It'll be bad for the community. It'll be bad for human health um, now and for our children and grandchildren. Your land values go down astronomically. In fact, you can't sell. If that goes ahead, it devalues the properties around my property and all around. You can't sell your property if it's got gas on it. In fact, you can't even sell your property if you've got gas next to you. Um, I've spoken to real estate agents who will tell me that unequivocally. It's really like a cancer. Once one does it, it's going to affect the other and so on, as we've seen in Queensland and New South Wales, and um, destroyed not just land and water, but destroyed families. We have a 5,000 acre property, which gives us quite a large buffer just at our own boundaries. But basically, Almost all of our neighbours are now signed for some form of infrastructure or gas wells. So you signing for your own property or you refusing access for your own property, locking your own gate, may very well appear to save you. But unless you've got your neighbours on side, unless you have your community on side, the industry just creeps around you and starts to destroy your lifestyle anyway just by the sheer amount of noise and pollution. Now, when your properties are only 100 acres, then you will be impacted and it will be devastating. It's only a money grab by government and, and, and business. It's Once they're finished and gone, they just couldn't care less. Uh, if you put it in environmentally sensitive areas where it's likely to impact in a degrading way on underground water systems and in good agricultural areas, you are bringing an incredibly damaging, destructive land use activity into an area it shouldn't be. Communities, when they come together, they can lock the gate. They can stop coal sand gas mining, and they will stop coal sand gas mining. I am absolutely confident that the community of Puwong, having shown that they can come together today, will be able to stop CSG and will be able to continue to celebrate what's so great about living here. One of the key things in Victorian mining law is that if a licence holder wants to come onto somebody's land um, to, to carry out mining, they need to get that landowner's consent. So um, saying up front that you're not providing that consent can provide um, a good message to the licence holder that you're not interested in mining on your land. Well, Victoria is in possibly the best position you can be in. Um, you don't have coal seam gas yet. You know it's coming. So you can look at other states and you can take those lessons 
and go out into the rural areas of Victoria and say, do you want this happening to your community? It's happened elsewhere. And we've also got the example, especially in New South Wales, of where communities have got together. They have uh, locked their gates uh, to these companies. They're refusing to allow them onto their properties. The model is there, both in terms of what you can expect if you let them on, and how you can go about keeping them off. In New South Wales, for example, these companies are falling over. These companies cannot get onto land. If they can't get onto land, they cannot explore for the gas and they simply take their investment elsewhere. Governments aren't going to act, so communities act. And, and they cannot take thousands of landowners to court. That's, that's the whole point. They can take you to court to come on, but how, how are they going to take thousands? They can't. And if they try, Here's these big multinational mining corporations, you know, from Switzerland and China and the United States, coming in, using Australian police to bulldoze their way past Australian farmers to come onto their properties to trash it. The people of Australia won't put up with that. Why are you here, Bob? Why am I here? Because of these bastards that are digging up our country. That's why I'm here. You can lock your gate. And by doing that, you create a situation full of tension and conflict. And it's non-violent, but it's full of conflict. And it actually um, sends a clear message out to the rest of the community. The media starts getting interested where they wouldn't otherwise be interested. This is David versus Big Goliath, which are the big mining companies and big government. And I firmly believe people who lock the gate are going to get the support of the vast majority of people in this country. Lock the gate with a chain and a padlock if you need to. Lock the gate, put up your trespass sign. Because if you get together and lock your gates, then there is no industry, no government can take an entire state. That won't happen. So the Victorian farmers carry this. You've been told you have no excuse now. Lock up your gate, lock up your community, and run that industry out of your state while you've still got a decent life ahead of you. I think the community, if they know about what um, could be happening here, would um, will be up in arms and, and wanting to stop it. I think what we've seen here in a small town in South Gippsland is really incredible. It shows us what people power can achieve and will achieve. And as we continue to lock our gates and lock up our communities, uh, we will see more and more towns uh, declare themselves coal in, coal seam, gas free, just like Poowong. I really do think we will stop this, but it will come from communities pulling together. I love Australia. I love Poowong. Uh, and we've got to keep it, we've got to fight these mining companies. They're big, big boys, so we've got to get big, big people power to lock the gate. We've just got to tell them it's so easy, stand at your gate, lock the gate, you don't have to converse with them. You have the right to say you're not coming onto my land, but we've just got to get it through to people that this is the only way to go, lock your gate. So we're inviting everyone from across Gippsland to stand with us today and to know that you can do this too. Let's work together to declare all of Gippsland CSG free and protect everything that is precious to us. It gives me great pleasure to declare this region coal and coal seam gas free. If Gippsland is precious to you and you want to protect our future, there are simple things you can do. Talk to your family and friends. Make a copy of this DVD and pass it on. Organise a community meeting. Join us. Go to www.lockthegate.org.au Protect the future that you want to see.